Hello. How are you Hello. doing? Yeah. All is well, my sister. It's, yeah. it's, it's good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. We praise him all the time. Yes. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, me too. <laughs> Good evening. God bless you, sir. Yes, bless you. How are you, my man? <laughs> bless you. What, yeah. What's your name? How you pronounce your name? Swane, 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 I'm so me. Swane, I'm so me. That that's gonna take practice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you yeah. can use the the last one. I'm so me. I'm so me. So me. Yes, so me. that's what, Yes, you got that one. <laughs> You got that one. <laughs> Perfect. I, I like I like that chair you sitting in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yes, sir. It's a, it's, it's a throne. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's a, a king's chair. Yes, definitely. In Africa, that's what we sit on. The kings are sitting on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah, no, that's lovely. Okay. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, my. I don't know, it's uh, in Africa <laughs> right now, it's an evening. Uh, I don't know in, in America, what is it now? It's a midday or in mid morning? It's mid morning, it's, it's 10 a.m. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's great. Okay. I will ask my sister to introduce us and then we will proceed. <laughs> I, I know it's the first time <laughs> meeting each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a great honor for us in South Africa uh, to have a guest from California, yes. Uh, yes. Dr. Beric Norwood. Uh, yes. I've known him for quite some time now. And it's amazing how we connect into the spirit. Mostly it's um, prophetic interpretation of dreams. Wow. And yeah. also hearing what God is saying. He's part of uh, my prophetic network in South Africa and yeah. also the apostolic hand of pastors in South Africa. So obviously when the time comes to come in South Africa, he will be welcomed by many sisters and brothers in South Africa. Uh, what I have observed and sensed with a uh, Dr. Verick note, he loves the Lord, wow. and God is uh, and God has graced him so much in the pro, in the in the area of the prophetic, where he mm -hmm. hears from the Lord, wow. especially on the part of dreams. God speaks to him with dreams. Dreams for the nations, dreams uh, for his family, and dreams for him uh, as a person. He has established a church in California. Uh, I know that uh, as all of us, uh, uh, Dr. Suwane, you will agree that uh, the, the pandemic has got the hardest hit in the world. Mm -hmm. And all I say is that everything works together for the good, for those who love the Lord and for those who are called by his name. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so honored, Dr. Verit, for you to take this time and, uh, and tune in in South Africa. Look, if it wasn't the pandemic, how we would have uh, uh, entered California. So we are in California wow. right now. I know that yeah. <laughs> many in California are watching us and many in South Africa are watching us. So these two nations, are gathered together in this one line because of the pandemic. If it wasn't it, we would have not been able to reach the whole uh, nations. You know, the, the, the pandemic has come up with the good side of it, where I almost sense that we are stretched in terms of the, the variety and diversity in terms of spreading the gospel. So I know my brother, I know how he loves the Lord. He's on Facebook, on all social networks. Uh, he has got teaching programs. I believe that today 
God is connecting uh, the car TV station, the car radio station with the world as now we have entered California. And I think tomorrow we'll have another California evangelist. Uh, as today we are having a prophet and Dr. Suwane is an apostle. Uh, I, I don't know whether you are catching up in the, in, the, in the prophetic already that the foundation of the church is laid on the apostles and the prophets. And tomorrow we'll have an, a, a, an, an evangelist. And Dr. Verick, shortly, I want to introduce, uh, I don't know how to call him, but he's my mentor. And uh, <laughs> we've come a long way. When I started uh, the prophetic training in South Africa, he was the one who immediately came on board and walked alongside with me, you know, in support, bringing media. Dr. Suwane is very much graced in the area of media. He's graced in establishing churches. He has got about, I think, about 14 churches to 15 churches uh, in South Africa and abroad that he has planted. And also, he has got a radio station of his own. He started working with a, one of the common popular radio station in the, in the, in, in the city of KwaZulu Natal, which is Radio Highway. From there, God prompted him to start his own radio mm. station and a, a television program. Wow. He is one of my powerhouse. So whenever I set up something like in the 30th next month of October, I will be hosting an Africa Unite Summit and he will be the one who will be uh, strong in the area of media, setting up everything to welcome people from all nations that should be visiting South Africa. I wow. hope I've done my best. Dr. Suwane was honored a doctorate honorarium by KwaZulu Natal and South Africa as a whole because of the work that he has done beside his ministry, the impact, the mentorship, uh, the influence he has made in the community of South Africa. And he was honored to be a doctor. Thank you so Amen. much, Dr. Suwan. Thank you. Thank Amen. you very much, my sister, Prophet Moy. Thank you very much. Wow, wow. And we welcome you, my brother, Dr. Verick in Africa. I was anticipating to meet you and uh, and my prophet has spoken a lot about you and I was looking forward uh, to meet you and hear what the Lord has to say. And uh, we are really encouraged. We are so honored to host you on our show today. You are welcome. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome in Africa. Thank you. Sister. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Thank yes. you so much. I forgot yeah, no. something. Dr. Yes. Suwane has written a book uh, in the fivefold ministry. Uh, that speaks about the five offices, the gift is a powerful book. And I hope when, she, when he comes to South Africa, uh, he will be able to share this book to more of us. And he's yeah. an author as well. Wow. Bless you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Mazo, my prophet, and uh, <laughs> the, the engine in Africa, the God-given gift. And God has hey. blessed us with our dear sister, Dr. Verica, she is a wonderful person and a connector. Look at Africa and, uh, and California today. We are meeting together. No, yeah. we are so excited. Yes, we welcome you, Dr. Verick. <laughs> welcome to Africa. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome Thank you, us. sir. Thank you. Y yes, Moy has been a blessing in my life. And uh, I know that it was a divine connection. Okay. And so I am grateful and I am thankful to God for how he just connect his people. Mm. But we understand that we serve a God that's a God of purpose. Yeah. Everything that he do, he do it for a purpose. Mm. And, and that's that's just how he rolled. Everything yes, is yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Why he do it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. 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 No. 
We, we, we really thank God for connecting us in this time, and we are looking forward to hear from you what God has laid in your heart. And we are working together, uh, Prophet Moy, and uh, you can lead us, and we will interconnect yeah. and speak and communicate and move forward. We are free, and uh, this is our show yeah. today, <laughs> Africa in <laughs> America. You. Yes, yeah. hallelujah. Yes, thank you Hallelujah. Very much. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Prophet Mo, thank you. <laughs> yes. yes um, Doctor, Dr. Verick, I know that God has got a message for mm -hmm. South Africa, has got a message for the world right now, and yes. has got a message for the body of Christ. We want to say what God is saying. Yes. What can you say to us in South Africa? What can you say to the body of Christ? What can you say into the world right now? I know that you are carrying a now weight, a prophetic weight for now. And yeah. that's what we want to hear. And that's what we want South Africa to hear. What California uh, is yeah. saying, you know, I believe that when we are one in the spirit, we've got the same message. Mm -hmm. yes. We've got one voice. And yes. I know that this, this time and era, there is a message each one of us is carrying, as the Bible says, that we prophesy in peace. So we want to give you this platform to minister to South Africa. Yes. Minister to Africa. Minister into the world right now. They want well, to hear your voice. Yeah. Well, what's, what's, what's been on my heart is... Um, First Peter chapter five verse ten. That's 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 been that's been a, uh, dear to my heart, and because we understand that Jesus was a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter, and so because he was a carpenter, he understood the right tools to use in order to to build homes, whatever they was building in his time, he understand the right tools to use because he was a carpenter. So now because he understood the right tools to use in that which is natural, he also understand what tools to use in that which is supernatural, dealing with his people uh, on a spiritual basis. And so we find in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, something very interesting. And Peter said, but the God of all grace. Now he didn't say the God of some grace. He said, but the God of all grace. He goes on to say, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Well, first of all, we must understand that we are called. We are called um, unto his eternal uh, glory. And so he says here, after that, we have suffered a while. Now, this word suffered, Moy, it describes the suffering that Jesus took while he was on the cross. It describes his passion of suffering that took place when he was on the cross. And so now, because he understands what tools to use in the natural? Again, I must repeat, he understand what tools to use in the supernatural. Now, one of the tools that he used for his body is this tool called suffering. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been in a season from the pandemic. Many people has been going through some suffering. It's been a time of suffering. But yet God has been using that time of suffering as a tool. And so now Peter tells us, after we have suffered a while, he makes you perfect. Now his suffering now, he tells us this is what it's going to do. It's going to make us perfect. And when we look at that word, uh, the, that phrase, make you perfect, it, it tells us, uh, it means to equip, it means to adjust and fit together. That phrase there, make you perfect, it means to adjust, it means to equip, and also it means to set, uh, to fit you together. And so 
while we going through the suffering, he is using that again to equip us for ministry, to make uh, the proper adjustments and also to fit us together in his perfect will for our life. You know, oftentimes when people go through suffering, they want to take off running. But when we suffer in the place that God have us in, it's, it's going to make us better. If we just allow the parter to do what only he can do, and that's make us uh, uh, perfect. And then he tells us here, he says, uh, and establish, establish. This word establish means to fix you firmly. It means to fix you firmly. It's speaking about our character. He, 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 God focus is to fix our character so that we look like him. And so in this place of suffering, the tool that he used called suffering, the first thing that he gonna deal with is he gonna establish our heart. He gonna fix our heart uh, firmly on him and that it be steadfast on him. And with meaning that our hearts need to be established on him. See, once our hearts is established on him and not the things of this world and not the people of this world, but on the one that created this world, which is him. He, ex he used this tool called suffering to establish our heart to be uh, fixed on him. And then he goes on to say, uh, strengthen. That word strengthen, it just means just what it means. And that's God's strength. He gives us the strength uh, that we need to meet uh, the calling that's on our life. He gives us the strength that we need so that we can continue to move forward in the things of God, regardless of what we're going through. He gives us the strength to continue on so that we don't throw the towel in. Why? Because he has given us the strength to keep on moving uh, in the things of God. And so then he tells us here, and it settles you. The last thing that he deals with is this word settle, which it, it deals with, uh, it speaks about to lay a foundation, to lay a foundation. And it is used uh, uh, as, um, it takes me to the place, to that scripture in Matthew chapter seven, where it talks about two houses, one that was built on the sand and the other one that was built on the rock. And so when the, when the storm came, the house that was built on the sand, it came tumbling down. But the house that was built on the rock, which is the sure foundation, it didn't move the house. Why? Because it was built on a solid foundation. And so it's too many believers today. We believe today and tomorrow we don't believe. Uh, that's an indication that you are not settled. You are not on the right foundation. You have not been built on the word. And so when he settles us, he builds us on his word so that when the storms come, when the pandemic come, any plague come, it's not going to move us. Why? Because we are settled on the word of God, which is a, a solid foundation. And so this is the season that he has been taking the body of Christ through. He's been taking us through a place where he has to establish us. He gives us the strength to endure and he settles us so that we stand on what we believe. No matter what comes our way, we understand that we are settled on the word of God. And this thing here, he says, after you have suffered a while, that's the indication. He's talking about a season. And so the Lord said to me, he said, you must look at the word season, son. He said, it's two words in the word season. The word, the first word is sea. He said, when you think about a sea, what do you think about? I said, I think about water. He said, what else do you think about? I said, I think about the Holy Spirit. He said, yes. He said, now, when you look at the next word in season, which is the word sun, he said, what do you think about when you see the word son? I said, I think about Jesus, the only begotten son. He said, when you go through a time of suffering for in the season, he said, what you must do is keep your focus on the one who created the sea and the one who created the only begotten son. So your focus must be on God. You must keep your focus on God 
when you enter into the season of suffering. He said, the, the problem is people take their focus off God, the creator, and they put their focus on the wrong news, which is the news that's going to change every day. They take their eyes off the gospel of good news that never change. It remains the same. He says, so when you go through a time of suffering, our focus must be in that season on the one who created heaven and earth, and that's God and God alone. That must be our focus when we go through a time of suffering. God said it's just a season, but don't take your focus off the one that created this season in your life, and that's God. And so I just believe that the body of Christ, we just been going through uh, suffering, but God has been using it to establish us, to strengthen us and to settle us. And so that we can enter into this time of revival. It's going to be a great revival. Not only is it going to be a great revival in uh, where I'm at in the USA, but it's going to be a, a great revival out there in, in Africa, all over the world. God is about to bring a great revival. But we're about to see uh, signs and wonders like never before. Mm -hmm. That's the season that uh, we are entering into. Uh, and that's the season of revival. Wow. wow. And that's wow. what I believe, uh, uh, Prophet Moe, that we are entering into. Masses wow. of, mm -hmm. of, of uh, manifestation of God and God alone. Wow, wow, wow. Dr. Varek, you have tried, touched so many things in just a matter of minutes and, and seconds, and you have blown my mind. If you're speaking about Jesus, he's a, he was a carpenter. He knows how to do things. And also, if he knows what to, to combine things as a carpenter, and also in the spirit, he understands so many things because he's the God of all grace. We have touched so many things, the suffering that makes us, we know that all things work together for the good. And after all this suffering that we have gone through, we have went through and he's molding us and he's building us and preparing us for this great revival you are telling us right now, because, and I, I like the way you put it off a season. You say it's a sea and the sun and the one who created the sea, He's the one who created, I mean, who, who gave us his, his son. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, so uh, yeah, I'm so amazed as you are elaborating and you are telling us that there is coming a revival. After we have gone through this, we have gone through the fire and through the storm, but there is coming a revival. And uh, tell us more, tell us more, Dr. Verig, because I, I, can, I can feel that God is telling us and giving us the direction which way we are heading right now. As we have gone through, we mustn't cry, but our focus must be on him because he knows that exactly what he's doing right now. I'm so struck by the words that we have spoken right now. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Prophet Moy. Yeah, the thing, the, the thing about, the yeah. thing about suffering, yes, sir. people that's, that's non-believers, when mm -hmm. they go through suffering, they lose all hope. Okay. But those of us who are settled on the things of God, Mm -hmm. We don't lose hope, we gain more hope. Okay. Why? Because we understand who's in control of this. Mm -hmm. See, once we understand who's in control of all of this, then it gives us hope that it's going to be better days. Why? Because we understand that through his word, it was always things that took place, uh, uh, but, but, but he used those things in order to get them to the right place. And so mm -hmm. now when we as believers, we don't lose hope. When we go through suffering, we know that this just going to be for a while, that God is using this for a, 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 to take us to that place where he want us to get to. And so therefore, when we get to that place called revival, we look like him. We act mm -hmm. like him. Why? Because we have been settled on him. See, mm -hmm. God is going to raise up those who truly believe him, mm -hmm. who truly know him for who he say he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because okay. He, he, he need to bless him when everything is going good, everything is going okay. But the test comes. Mm -hmm. 
when things is not going okay? Can you still bless him today when the storm has hit your life? Mm -hmm. Though yesterday everything was fine, but today is a different day. Can you still bless him like you blessed him on yesterday? See, this is where we've been tested in this pandemic. We've been tested by those that truly love him and those just like have the words they say they love him. But God mm -hmm. not concerned about what you say. He concerned about your actions. Because if mm. you truly love him, you're going to continue to, to lift him up, no matter what come your way, because you truly love him. He's looking at those who truly loves him. See, mm. I'm one, my friend. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in three years ago, we lost our daughter. Mm. We lost our daughter. She was three minutes from home. She was 20 years old. She mm. had a head-on collision with an 18-wheeler truck. Mm. So well. she died. Mm. And, and so I'm going to be honest, I was upset with God because I'm like, man, God, how come you didn't stop this? How come this? How come that? And so my wife said to me, she said, babe, you, 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 you don't need to be mad. Don't be mad at God. You know better than that. God has been good to us. But for a moment, I got into the flesh. I got angry with God because I knew that he could have stopped it. Mm. But yet he didn't. And mm. so that right there, that was showing me and my wife. When we went through that situation, that proved to us that we truly been building our life on the rock. Mm. Because mm. I still today, I am lifting them up no matter what. Because I understand that my life has been truly built on the rock. Yeah. It, it's truly been built on because we have been through many trials and many tribulations, but yet and still, I lift them up. Mm, mm, We've been mm, raising wow. a son. We've mm. been raising a son. He's nine years old. He don't even talk. But yet God gave me a dream of him talking. Wow. He gave me a dream of him talking, and God said, he shall talk one day. Mm, mm. And we've been believing him ever since. And so I learned something about faith. Okay. We got to continue. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. By faith, yes. If we're not living by faith, then we're not living for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, when we truly love him, we're going to believe what he said, and we're going to stand on it, and we're going to look for it. Mm -hmm. And so, my friend and my sister, we got to continue to believe what we know he said, and what we know he's saying. Two of the things that we understand about Abraham. Abraham teaches us on this journey with God is two things we must learn. The first thing we must learn is what he said and what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He told Abraham, okay. go up the mountain to sacrifice. He knew what he said. And so therefore he did it. When he got up to the mountain, as soon as he was about to sacrifice, God said, stay thy hand. Now he knew what he was saying. If he wow. was stuck on what he said, he would have took his life. Mm -hmm. But because he okay. knew what he, was saying, right. he obeyed exactly what he was saying. And so this is how our life should be. We must walk sure. in what he said and move in what he said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you emphasize more on that one? Because I, I, I feel something, what, because we stand up on what God said, but we cannot hear what he is saying right now so that we can proceed and so that we will know exactly what to do in the now. Mm, I hear you. I what hear you, is, Dr. Very. Well, what comes to my mind is Romans 8, 14. Uh -huh. It said, don't be by the spirit mm. are the true sons of God. Whoa. Mm, so mm, in this mm, pandemic, mm. in this pandemic, those of us who truly believe God, truly love God, it mm. should have been a time that we've been asking God, make me more sensitive. Okay. Make me mm, more sensitive. Mm. Wow. Make me more <laughs> sensitive so that I, I, I would know what you said. I know what you said, but I don't want to get stuck off what you said just in case you're telling me uh, turn right now. And so I want to know what you're saying as well. And so we ask him to make us more sensitive so that we be led by the spirit. 
Because my my prayer, I want to be a true son of God. Okay. I want to be a true son of God. I remember one time, my brother, um, we we woke up, and when we woke up one morning, and I woke up with a taste, I had a taste in my mouth for uh, a vanilla shake. Okay. And some nuggets. Okay. okay. Woke yeah. up with that taste. And so I told my wife, I said, let's go to McDonald's. Okay. And she said, <laughs> okay. Now, it's strange for me to have a taste for a vanilla shake because I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. Mm, okay. But I knew that this is what I was tasting and I didn't understand why. And so we drove to McDonald's. And so we parked in the parking lot uh, uh, to, to go inside the rest of uh, McDonald's. My wife says to me, she said, I see a lady on the uh, bus stop. She said, I'm going to go over there and, and talk to her for a second. Then I'll come into McDonald's with you. I said, okay, I'll stand in line. And so I'm standing in line because one of the orders that I'm going to place is a vanilla shake and mm -hmm. some nuggets. <laughs> I'm knowing why. And so now finally my wife finished talking to this lady. She was a homeless lady. My wife comes into the uh, McDonald's and she said, guess what, babe? I said, what? She said, I asked the lady at the bus stop, I asked her, was she hungry? And she said, no, I'm not hungry. She said, but I got a taste for a vanilla shake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I'm thinking that, God gave me a taste for what this lady was asking him for. I knew it wasn't for me because I'm lactose. Mm. And I said, wow, that's why I had this taste. Okay. It was for her. And so we brought her a big shake and we took it to her. And okay. so what I'm saying is that those that are led by the spirit. Mm. Mm. See, see he, he, he used all his senses in us. Okay. One of his senses is taste. Mm. See? Mm. So sometimes mm. we have a taste, but it's not really for you. It's for somebody that you're going to be introduced to. Okay. And that's okay. around. Mm. Yes, mm. somebody mm. around you. And, 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 and you are more. You more. I just see the, I see the word state. I see the word state, right? S T A T E. Write that down. Write down state. Tell me when you wrote it down. You, 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 yes, did you write I've it written down? it down. It's S T A T E. Yes. If you look at that word state, you can also. Now write T-A-S-T-E, taste, write taste. Yes, I've written taste. Do you see the same letters in that, in state? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Lord yes. said to tell you, I'll send, send you to around to different states so that they can taste and see that the Lord is good. Wow. <laughs> see, this is what we call to do. We call to go around to different states so that they can taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm, I hear. Wow. One of the one of the <laughs> things that one of the things that God does with me is give me He give me a, do a play on words in my head. It's, it's and and I just I, I just I just say it like He show it, and, okay. and and sometimes it might not make sense to some people, but if you just talk to God about it, He make He He make sense out of it. Okay. Uh, how long it has been God using you and? using those words in your mind and uh, how you have grown in it because it's a gift. Uh, I'm not used to it, yeah. I'm not familiar. Yeah, can you, can you teach us yeah. more about that? And also as you are speaking to uh, Prophet Moy right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <flabbergasted. laughs> you know, I, I, um, I don't know how, I, I got saved in 2001, my wife and I. Okay. We got saved in 2001 on February 4th, 2001. And, and, and from there, from there, uh, I started seeing words 
and, and I see words in words. I, I can't explain it. Only way I can explain it is that, and, and, and not, to, not to go into the secular, but that's the only way I can explain it. I grew up, I used to watch Soul Train. Okay. Did y'all have Soul Train in Africa? No, we, we see on TV. <laughs> okay. Well, it was this, it was this uh this particular show that came on called Soul Train. And okay. and and before they went to commercial, they would have two people on this board that had a scramble of words. And so they would be trying to figure out what the word was. And so okay. when the commercial came back, they were already had figured out the word. And so that's kind of how God deal with me. I see words scrambled mm. and in it, I see him put it together. And it's, mm. that's the only way I can explain it. Okay. And so he, and that's what he, he, he just, because our God is an amazing God. Yes. <laughs> and he deal with all of us different. Okay. But yes, yet we, yeah, we all created yes. in his image, uh, but we all are different. We, and that's what make him so awesome. Because he don't want us to 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 be look alike. He just want us to just be like him. Our job is to be like him, not be like everybody else. Just be like him. Amen. 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 And, and you, you, sir, you, sir, you, sir, you, you yes. got you got a you got a love for God. You got a love for God, and I'm, I'm seeing your I'm seeing your heart. I'm seeing your heart, and the Lord said He loves me. He loves me. And because he loves me, God said, I'm going to use him. Mm -hmm. God said, I'm going to use you, son, in, 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 a, way, in, in a way that is just going to, it, it, it's going to make you look in the mirror and say, wow, Lord, <laughs> is this really happening? Is this really mm -hmm. happening? You're going to find mm -hmm. yourself questioning, is this really, you're going to think it's a dream. When God mm -hmm. get through with you, you're going to think you're dreaming. Mm, mm, I hear you. Yes, okay. he's he gonna take you to a, a higher mm. level in the spirit in him, sir. Mm, mm. Thank and, you. And so Thank you. Be, be sensitive to when he wants to tell you when to fast and when to pray. Mm, okay. Allow him to tell you, uh, son, give me three days. Uh, um, son, give me seven days. He's gonna tell you days to fast, but you must do it. Because he's gonna test your obedience. Mm -hmm. So you, see, see, when we walk with God, yeah. God tells us he's gonna do us and so. But when we look in the Bible, in every miracle in the Bible, the individual had to do some kind of participation. Meaning, if he say, get up and take your mat, well, mm -hmm. they had to get up and take their mat. It's yeah. always gonna be something that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear A lot you. of people yeah. say, the, the more we sow, the more we grow. You know, I, I, you know, I don't teach that kind of way. My thing is this. The more he tell you, you do. Okay. That's okay. it. Whatever okay. he tell us to do, we yes, do it. Plain and mm -hmm. simple. We don't okay. ask no questions. We know mm -hmm. we heard him, and we do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when he tells you what day is to fast, fast. Okay. It's going to change your whole life. Amen. Amen. Do that. You know, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. He's going he gonna, he gonna to he gonna unlock more of the prophetic that's inside of you. He's going to unlock it. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Varek. Thank you very much. I received that. <laughs> Prophet Mo, <laughs> it's like you are saying something. Thank you. No, no, no. I was, say, I, I, I was like, like amazed, you know, how God used him. Uh, with weights and uh, mm -hmm. we are always interested as prophetic people to know how God uses you know his vessels for his glory some yeah. see visions some mm -hmm. could just sing some mm -hmm. could just see images and mm -hmm. uh, it's my first time where God plays around the way to remind me of uh, Dr. Dale Bronner Mm -hmm. I know if you know him, Dr. Dale Bronner, uh, previous years has been running trainings for John Maxwell, mm -hmm. leadership mandate trainings. 
So at that time, it was my first time seeing someone whom God has been using him mightily in terms of acronyms. With Dale Bronner, he used acronyms to minister. So wow. it's amazing how God uses us. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it's amazing, the, Dr. Varik, the way you are saying, and as you, as I have that... Uh, that zeal for God, and uh, you said he will guide me along the way. I have to be obedient. Thank you for that word. And uh, as, you, as you are speaking to us, and we are learning, and we are growing in the, in the prophetic, in the word where God speaks to us. And uh, as you say, he just gives you words, and give you words, and you speak the words, and you are able to solve the... It's another gift. Uh, Pastor Moy, he, he, she used to, I mean, that's a gift uh, to speak the scriptures, the scriptures, and he will direct you and speak and everything. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, the prophetic house, and I can feel the atmosphere of the prophetic. Dr. Verek, ju just flow and, and tell us, and, and tell us what God is telling to, uh, is saying to us in Africa, because we want to hear that what God is saying to us and guide us, and we as Africa be ready with the uh, churches. I'll, I'll... Uh -huh. Yes, you can go ahead. Well, all I'm feeling, all I'm feeling... <laughs> All I'm feeling in my heart for Africa is, is what I'm feeling over here. And that okay. is a, a great revival is coming, a great wow. revival. And, and one, of the things, one of the things, my brother, is that uh, the Lord is teaching me is that to, to only, to only uh, say what he tells me to say, mm -hmm. because oftentimes we try to pull from a place that, and we pull nothing and we start pulling from the flesh. So, so I, I, I can't make up nothing but what he has given me and that's, it's a great revival coming over there and over here. And, and that's all I'm really feeling in my heart from the Lord as far as uh, Africa is that a great revival. Um, that, that's, what I, that's what I'm okay. hearing the Lord say. Okay. I'm not hearing okay. nothing else but that. Okay, there, there's something also that you touch after we've going through the suffering and it strengthen us, it circles us and uh, the sand and the rock and when we obey him, tell us as you have uh, shared with us that story, the church's story that about you losing your daughter, how, how, how did you be? How, how, how did you dealt with and also and be able to look forward and to move forward and to trust the Lord and 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 understand that the Lord knows exactly what is is doing. I know you were angry at the first place, but after la later on you were able to move forward. They tell us more. How did you deal with that and move okay. forward? Well, it, it's it's amazing, uh, sir, uh, because a month before this took place. Okay. My wife and I, my wife and I was in the bedroom with our son and my daughter knocks on the bedroom door, open it up and she had a hysterical look on her face. And I said, what's wrong, babe? She said, dad, I had a dream. She said, and the dream seemed so real. Hmm. I said, what was the dream? She said, dad, I had a dream that I got hit by an 18 wheeler truck. Wow. And so my wife and I immediately, we started rebuking that. We said, that's from the devil. That's he trying to bring fear. You know, it's not going to happen. God have purpose for you, babe. She said, but dad, it seems so real. I said, I understand. I said, but it's not going to happen. Now, this dream came a month before it happened. <laughs> but I did not think that... It was a dream from God. I just knew okay. that that was the devil, mm -hmm. but it happened just like she saw it. Now my daughter was a dreamer just like me. Okay, okay, okay. She was a, she was a dreamer just like me, but that was, I thought that that was one of those dreams that was like a nightmare from the devil. Mm -hmm. okay. And it happened, it happened just like she saw That's it. True. And so now my thinking changed on when the scripture says, that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. Now, we want to think that he only going to show us good things. Mm, that's but he's not, he didn't say what kind of things. The key word in there is things. Okay, things, yes. Things, things is an indication, good things and bad things. 
Okay, okay, okay. So I look mm. at that scripture different now. And so um, before this happened, oh, it happened on a Friday. Sunday, the Lord said to me, I want you to fast for five days. I want you to start on Monday, come off Friday. Now, I didn't know that he was preparing me spiritually for the news that I'm going to hear on Friday. Sure, sure, sure. I emptied myself like he told me. And that Friday, which was the last day of the fast, I get a knock at the door at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I looked out the curtains. It was the police truck. I opened up the door. The police, I said, what can I do for you, sir? He said, well, do you know someone that drive a red Suzuki? I said, yes, that's my daughter. He said, um, do she have license? I said, yes, she have license. Um, I said, is everything okay? He said, well, I just, I just came by. I answered the call on, on, on my um, radio just to see. And they told me to come over here to ask this question. He said, and that's all I was told to do. He turned around and walked away. So I ran behind him. I said, sir, can you tell me is everything okay? He said, well, you're going to get a phone call so to make a long story short, he asked, did she have license? Because the picture of her license that they were looking at, it don't look like the face that they saw in the car. Mm -hmm. So they okay. thought that maybe someone robbed her, took the car or whatever. They didn't know the person that they were seeing on the license is the actual person that they see in the present because mm -hmm. the impact it just disfigured her. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so um, all I can say is that I learned through that season of my life that my wife and I have truly been building our life on the rock. Mm -hmm. Because if that would have happened 10 years ago before that it happened, I wouldn't have been able to take it. Okay. But he has allowed me to build on him. And I found out on that day what's news that no parent want to hear. I found out on that day in that season of my life that, wow, I've truly been building my life on the word of God. Mm -hmm. We don't know if we truly been building our life on him until we truly go through something. This is why we're gonna always have tests in life. Test comes to show us who we, what we really are made of. He already know. It's no new, new news to him, but it's news to us. Okay. Do I need to do I, what I need to do more? What I need to do? I need to study more. Do I need to mm -hmm. pray more? So when we go through a test, we get our answer on what we need to do. And so I found out through my test. Keep on doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Keep on seeking him. Keep on reading his word. Keep on fasting. Keep on just obeying what he said. And though it, sometimes it don't look like nothing is happening, but that's on the outside because something on the inside is happening because God builds from the inside. See, mm -hmm. he builds yeah. us from the inward. Mm -hmm. See, and so therefore, what we do in secret. One day he bless us in the public. Mm. One day. And so when he tell us to go into our closet to pray, he not, not necessarily saying go into a physical closet. What that word closet mean, it means the bedroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, when a husband and wife go into the bedroom and close the door, they close the door because what they have to talk about and what they desire to do is not open for everybody else to see or hear. Because it's grown, it's, it's the husband and wife time. It's a private time. So we shut the door, so, which indicates this is how it is with us and God. We shut the door, shut the door on the things that will distract you so we can have a moment with him, a private, intimate moment between you and God. See, and, and this yeah. is how I have lived my life. Intimate moments with him. 
just me and him, because he's the only one that know who I am. He's mm. the only one who know you. Mm. He's the only one that know more. How mm. do we know about us? Well, we commune with him, and he talked to us about us. Tell yeah. us, I want to. I want to fix this anger here. I want to fix this insecurity. And so we find ourselves communing about specific things that he want to change on the inside of us so that we look more like him, talk more like him, walk more like him. This is who we want to copy after, and that's him. And so we find that out in the secret place. And so because I have spent time in the secret place, that prepared me for the knock at the door wow. from the police. Mm. Mm -hmm. prepared me, sir, and, and that, that's, that truly prepared me for that knock. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. No oh, one could have told God. me that I would ever have to do my daughter's funeral. No. But the amazing yeah. thing is, my brother, the best sermon that he ever preached through me was her eulogy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was her eulogy. That was the best sermon I ever heard him preach through me. I was just basically just sitting in the audience watching him in my body. Mm, 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 mm. And that, that was, it was, it was all him. Mm, and so mm. he gave me the understanding, my brother, yeah, that our children mm -hmm. has been loaned to us. Our children been loaned to us. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so he asked me, he asked me a question. I said, God, can you prepare me for the eulogy? He said, yes. He asked me a question. He said, what happened when you take a loan out at the bank? I said, I have to give it back. Eventually. I, he said, yes. He said, I loaned Verica, which is her, her name is Verica. He said, I loaned Verica to you. Now it's time for you to give her back to me. Sure. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Mm. I hear you. And so that, that's what wow. that helped me mm. Mm. stand before his people because I understood that it was time for her to go back to him. Wow. No, thank you for that story and uh, for sharing that testimony. I believe it's going to touch many of our viewers and listeners in Africa because of you have shared. And I, I would like you, because I feel right now, I would like you to pray for those who have face such uh, uh, in their life and who have gone through some, they have that bitterness within them and they are yes. still angry. Yes, they are still yes. angry uh, at God. Can, can you yes. please and advise them and also and pray for those who are listening right now and watching? Yes, yes for, for you, ma'am, and for you, sir, that still have that bitterness in your heart towards God. It's been years of bitterness that you, you don't want to hear nothing about God because you're still angry with God. I want to speak to you, sir. I want to speak to you, ma'am, because oftentimes we hear from people that still have their children. They never lost none of them. So it's easy for them to say, oh, I understand, but they really don't understand because they have not uh, experienced what you have experienced and what I have experienced. But I want you to know, ma'am, and I want you to know, sir, that I understand your heart. I understand how you're feeling. I was like that for a moment. But then I realized after he shook me to get me back to where I know I'm supposed to be, and that's with him in his mindset. I want to tell you God's heart. I want to tell you his mindset. His heart is simply this. He would never do anything to hurt you and I. He loves us. But we must understand, he know how you feel too because he saw his son on the cross go through all that torment. And yet he could have stopped it, but it was part of his son's journey so that we can be here today. It was He had to go through that. So nobody feel the pain and understand the pain like God himself. Oh yes, he understand that. But I want you to know, he loves you and, and, and he has purpose for you. And as long as you carry that bitterness, you will never become better. One of the things we must understand in the word bitter, all you have to do is 
take the I out of bitter. Take the I out and let the E come. Elohim come. El Shaddai come and put in the place. And you become better. You become better. And this is what he wants to do. He want to make you better, beloved. So I want to pray for you that you just open up your heart and allow him to speak to you because you have closed his voice off. He's trying to talk to you, but you don't want to hear from him. He got, he want to make you better. He want to help you because this is why you have a heart problem right now. This is why you have high blood pressure mm. because all these things that you've been holding on to is now affecting your physical. See, in order for us to really get healed physically, we must first be healed spiritually because everything happened in the spirit before it happened in the physical. So I wanna pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now. I pray God for that individual God, that man, that woman, that's, that's bitter. They, they just, they don't wanna hear nothing about you. But today, Father, somehow, some way, they are listening. Yes, they are listening. And so I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit, the precious Holy Spirit, begin now to touch their heart. Oh God, take them down memory lane. Take them down memory lane, God. When they first met you, huh? when they first gave their life to you, it was so, it felt so good to them. They were so excited. Take them back to that place, God, when they first met you. And when they, when they go back to that place spiritually, they will be reminded how they miss you, how they need you. Oh, yes. They will be reminded that, wow, your love do not change. You remain the same. You don't change. We change. But you never change. So, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit take them down memory lane. Uh, one of the things about the memory is, is we have good memories and we have bad memories. But, God, take them down that good memory. So they remind it. Mm, they reminded how they met you. And things will begin to change in their life. Why? Because they will, they will start falling back in love with you, for real. They will love you for real this time. Yeah, it's no condition, see? We, we have conditions with our love that have to stop and because his love is unconditional. But see, our love conditional. We love him when everything is okay. No, your true love is tested when things is not okay. Do you still love him for real? That's the test. So it shows us, beloved, that we truly didn't really love him because we angry with him. Yes, that, that's an indication that we didn't love him. So I pray that this time we truly fall in love with the maker of life. And I pray that the Holy Spirit himself visits you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, my brother. And uh, you have spoken and you have encouraged, you have built us and prophesied and give us that victory. We are looking forward for that victory. I love you so much. I believe that communication, I mean, today being introduced to you, it's a beginning of friendship. I know amen. I've got a brother in California. <laughs> and I have found you right now, my brother. And, and yeah. I look forward um, yeah. to, to, to embracing you. Yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes. thank you very much, uh, uh, Prophet Moy. And uh, words you want to say because you are the one who connected okay. this network. Thank you. Over to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for me, I just want to bless you with the <laughs> with the scriptures that I've been receiving as you were talking. Okay, uh, uh, I'll start with uh, our guest, uh, Doctor Very. I've received Luke chapter 2, verse 52. I've received First um, Samuel chapter 2, 26. And uh, Judges 13, verse 24. These three scriptures are speaking about, for me, we're leaping out. Number one scripture is Luke 2, 52, where it says, Jesus Christ grew in statue and with favor, no. one with God, and mm. secondly, with men. Yes. And then with Samuel is the same scripture again in the Old Testament, and with Samson, 
was the same scripture as well. Yes. And what does it say to me? It says, you have the favor with God. You have uh, it. Sir. And you are walking in, in that favor with God. But now, as uh, we sir. are talking, you are stepping in into another season where now God is granting you favor with men. Wow. He's granting you that all you need is favor with men. Men that will believe in your vision. Men that will believe in your mandate. And men that will move further than that and say, with our money, with our resources, we are building the church of God with you. We are standing with yeah. you in order to accomplish the mission that God has set before you. This time, it does not require your effort. Your effort all these years was your relationship with God, was your intimacy with God, was for God to hear your prayers, was for God to give you accurate spot on words. But now there is a turning around, a turning around where God now is rewarding you through men. Mm. It's going to take a couple and a family and that one man that will stand with you in terms of establishing what mm. God has entrusted you with, which is his church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I know that um, you, um, you write in the vein and so i just want to uh en encourage you that number one we understand that that god is a confirming god he confirms and so i want you to know that last month my spiritual father he's a prophet uh he was on facebook and so i i got on facebook and, uh, you know, when you, when, when you come on live with someone, they see your name and all that. Well, when he saw my name, he said, son, the Lord told me to tell you that it's going to be someone that's going to help you build a church. Mm. And so I want you to know that you, you, was, you, was, uh, you, you hit the bullseye like, like you always <laughs> do. And, 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 and so uh, uh, be encouraged. I, 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 I really appreciate you, and I thank God uh, for you. I want you to know that uh, that the best is yet to come, Moe. Again, you're going to go around these different states and for them to taste and see. And so we praise him. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And uh, I want to bless. Could you see um, that, last, that last verse? <laughs> Say it again. Could you tell me the last verse? I wrote down two of them, but I didn't hear the last one, the third one. The judges. Judges. Okay. Judges chapter 13, verse 24. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yes, they are saying one and the same thing. If you look at them, they are saying one and the same thing. But with you, God was saying, you have the favor with him. Don't yes. even doubt. Walk in oh. his favor. Allow him now to grant you favor with men that are going to stand with you and say, I support this ministry. I want this church. I am standing alongside with you as, as it was with, Maureen, uh, with Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Men that are going to pull you up now. It's no longer going to be your effort. You cannot do it alone. What God yes. is going to do, you cannot do it alone. And God has taken out, I'm sorry, all your resources yes and mm. the reason was so as to strengthen your muscle in terms of your faith giving grace of speaking for the things and things come into being you have yes. spoken a lot now god is going to use men because he cannot come down uh, on earth but he will use men to materialize everything that you have prophesied over. 
Wow, 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 wow. Can, 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 can I add on what you are saying, uh, Prophet yes. Moy? And also, yes. as, 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 as Dr. Verek was speaking, I was seeing him uh, having stones, different kinds of stones in his hand. And he mm. was, uh, you were just, as you are speaking, you were just moving, like it was marble, marbles. I don't know if you understand marbles, different stone. So they were changing colors, changing colors. Suddenly you were wearing a coat of many colors. I just reminded of Joseph with a coat wow. of many colors. As soon as uh, Prophet Moy is speaking to, uh, saying those words, and I remembered what I saw as you were beginning to share with us and you were playing with these uh, marbles and different uh, jasper, I mean, yes. diamond and different, they were changing colors in your hand as you were doing it and things were beginning to happen, doors and windows were opening and uh, I saw so many people around you and uh, uh, you, you were happy. And I wanted to, to, to add on what uh, Prophet Moy was saying. Thank you. That, that's, so, that's so prophetic, my friend, because I, this morning I put on some body spray called marble. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I get it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Prophet Moy, you wanted to say something before we close? Yes. Yes. I wanted to, to declare what I see. Okay. With, uh, with Dr. Suwane. Dr. Okay. Suwane, I see, uh, I first got the word, the house is full. Mm, okay. The house is full. But when mm. I, in the spirit, I was trying to make that declaration. It was like you are having a question of how, but there is a sudden flood in. And um, let me first uh, give you these scriptures. Okay. I got uh, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. And I got Isaiah 42, verse 16. And I got Genesis 22, verse 8. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19 is saying, never compare your past with what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do a new thing. Don't you see it? It has already started. It has already begun. And this time it's moving so fast. It's like a, an aeroplane. It's like a flight. So you are embarking on a flight movement in ministry where it flies so quickly. Wow. And the Lord is saying, don't you perceive it? For me, it's like, I don't know whether I'm adding, but it's like, is it not a flight? That has already happened with the car radio station and the TV program mm -hmm. where you are in California already. Wow. So you <laughs> <Amen>. are moving <laughs> in a flight movement. Your wow. house is full. I see people from all over the place mm -hmm. flocking in and you'll say where these people are coming from. God has been preparing them. And this time, God is giving you new people with new mentality, wow. with new perception of who you are and mm. what God has laid in you. And um, Isaiah 42, 16 says, I am leading you into blind ways, ways that you have never walked before. It's like mm. everything to you is going to be new. Mm. It's like God <laughs> is starting you all afresh. <laughs> it's starting you all mm. afresh mm. but it's amazing it's afresh but already full I wish mm. you can write this down it's afresh mm. but mm. it's already full amazing mm. when, when something starts afresh normally it starts there from the point A but with you it's full already mm. and it's reaching the world already God has begun that and then Genesis 22, verse 8. I want to start it from verse 7. Where Isaac was asking Abraham, you are saying we are going to do a sacrificial offering. But where is the lamb? Yep. Verse 8 is saying the Lord himself will provide. Amen. The Lord Amen. himself 
will provide. There is a new platform and a new, I see a huge place, like a huge land. Wow. A new <laughs> platform, a new land that you are landing in and you have never been there before. <laughs> but God is saying it, the house is already full. It's amazing. <laughs> the platform <laughs> is bigger than the platform you were, you, you were in before. And God is saying, he himself will provide. You have planted so much that now in this new dimension, as I'm saying, this land is so big, it's amazing. And it has got a new complete platform. You know, I see blue around it, blue Whoa. around it. It's like it's your color. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Let okay. me stop. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you just like the like Doctor. Uh, very excited. You just nailed it. <laughs> and because the building right today, I was in the place where you are speaking. It's an open land. It has a building with blue on it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly the color you are talking about. <laughs> and it's a new place completely in it, in a different place where I was working on. And you are so accurate. And also when you were mentioning and it's a flight, we are taking a flight. Somebody told me a few years ago, he said, and he, he's seeing me and I'm going to run fast and like never before. And like he, he saw me entering into a Ferrari. A Ferrari was speeding in a way that has never seen before. And what we are saying, it's a confirmation of what God has told me and re-emphasizing every now and then that again, this is, and also about a fresh thing and a fresh new, and uh, this is what God has told me when we enter 2021, we had a, a, a whole night prayer. So, uh, I mean, a midnight prayer where we, have, uh, we normally do. And uh, God said to me, and everything that is going to do, it's a new thing. And we declare 2021 a year of a new era. And he told me that I must prepare that something that is going to do, it's something that I'm not used to. It's a new era. It's new things altogether. I'm just confirming what you have saying, Prophet. Mm. It's really accurate, straight <laughs> to the point. <laughs> Thank you. Bless wow. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bless wow, you. Wow. Thank you. We thank, thank you. the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Amen. Yeah. No, thank you very much for this moment. And uh, thank you, uh, Prophet Moy, and uh, for connecting me with Dr. Verik Nowood. And uh, we really thank God for this moment and for this time. Yes. Uh, I really love you, my brother. Thank you for sharing to too. us. And, and we will ask you again uh, in the near future and be with us and share what God is in your heart. Yes. We are anticipating for that revival that God is going to bring in our land. Yes. And uh, it's our yes. anticipation. Do you want to say something Amen. before we close, Dr. Verik? No, I just want to thank you guys for having me. Uh, it, 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 it's amazing because I felt like we all sitting at the same table right in front of each other's face. Uh, uh, though we on social media, but it felt in the spirit, it just felt like I was sitting right between you guys. And so I'm thankful for God uh, allowing this to take place. I'm just thankful and I'm grateful and I don't take it lightly. I'm humbled by it, and, and, and I know without a shadow of doubt that this is God. And so for that, I'm thankful. Okay, thank you very Amen. much. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Verik. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. And Prophet Moy, thank you very much. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank Bye, you. brother. Bye. 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 Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Those are my guests. I'm Lapanage Prophet Moy and Dr. Verik Nowood from America. That was a wonderful conversation. I hope you were blessed by that and the sharing of Dr. Verik, what he, he's been sharing to us and telling us about the story that he's been through and also encouraging us to be on the stand and to know and be on the word of God and receiving what God is telling us and the prophetic ministry and with Prophet Moy and 
and he, what he has shared, she has shared with us. It is amazing. I'm telling you, God is speaking prophetically. Your life will never be the same again. I love you all. May we see each other next time. God bless you. You know the moment, the hour. We've got our radio station. We've got our television station online, Car Radio and Car TV. You be blessed. Follow us on our, our pages. And I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. Your life will never be the same again. See you next time. We are going bigger, better, and broader international. God bless you. Bye-bye.